Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'll start with a questions with all of you. If you require to connect to a SQL Server from any program like uh, .NET applications or running on Azure function or web app or any other platform, or maybe a logic app connecting to a SQL Server, how do you connect to the SQL Server? Well, the answer may be you connect to the SQL Server using a connection string, which you get it. Username is uh, where connection strings equals to uh, database name XYZ. The username is this, password is this. But managing this kind of a sensitive connection string is going to be a security overhead as we are into our managed identity demonstration. So today we are going to discuss how to connect to the SQL Server using the managed identity from any of your application. For the demonstration, we are going to use the logic app to connect to the SQL Server, but the concept will apply same for any of your program. So this is my logic app demonstration. This is my logic app which I'll be using for the demonstration. Now this logic app has got the identity enabled because as we mentioned that we are going to use the managed identity for the demonstration for the connectivity. So we need to have the identity enabled on this source service. So in this case, Logic App has got the system managed identity, but you can also use the user managed identity as well. At the moment, my Logic App has got a couple of workflows which I've used in our previous demonstration. So I'm going to create a new workflow for this MSI with SQL demonstration. So I'll be calling it as an MSI with SQL. And the workflow type is going to be the stateful workflow. The workflow is created successfully. Before we design the workflow in the editor, first thing I'm going to do is I need to define the permissions to the SQL Server. So for the demonstration, we have a SQL Server MSI server instance, which I've created in this Azure subscription. Now, this SQL Server has got a database, which is a SQLDB product. And in this database, I have a SQL table. Now, from the connectivity point of view, this SQL Server has the Active Directory authentication enabled, and that's the only authentication option I have, which means that I'm not enabling any username password authentication option, which is being allowed to connect to this particular SQL Server. OK? Now, if you remember our previous demonstration, to in order to fetch or read or write data onto the target services like storage account or service bus, we used to assign the roles to the access and manage control option. But in this case, that's not what we are going to do with the SQL Server database. So what we are going to do is we'll log into our SQL database using this query editor option. I'll connect with my account, which is my Active Directory account. Now, here you need to create a user into the SQL database, which is required to be fetched or to be connected by the managed identity. So we'll be using that managed identity as an user. So let me just check if we have any user already available. It's going to be a database principal user. So let me select. If select a star form says dot database principle where type is an E, E means the external type of user. So we have one external user which I have created in the past, but apart from that, there are no such other type of, uh, there are no other user which is of type E. Now let's create a user, okay, for the logic app. For this, I'm going to run this query and once the user is created, you need to assign the permissions to the user, which is a database data reader for this demonstration because we want to read the data from the SQL table. That has been already created, so that's why it is failing, but access runs successfully, so permission is assigned. Now if I expand the table, which is I have a person table here, if I select top. 10 rows, so this is the row I have in the SQL database table. Now let's go to the role and permissions are assigned. Now let's go to the workflow section in the logic app. We'll go to the designer, we'll select a trigger option. 
again I'm going to use a HTTP GET trigger specify the in-app option specify this in-app trigger method type I'll be using as in git set next I'll create an action in this case we'll be using the SQL server so I'm always filtering the run type as an in-app because I want to use the built-in connector I don't want to use a managed connector or the connectors which are a payable connector basically so let's connect use this option C equal server in app and execute query because we just want to read the data connection name uh, like we did previously with the other service so I say SQL connection again authentication type by default is the SQL connection string option but that is something we do not want to use so we'll be using the manage identity option and then we'll be using the system manage identity the server name endpoint uh, which is the name of the server you can get the information what kind of a server name endpoint it is expecting so name of your sql server database and windows.net right so let's go to the sql server This is the one provide here and then the name of the database which is this one always you can parameterize all these values so connection name is there uh, I can write the query again you can write it with the help of parameters Just trying to verify the query from the query editor and I've been using the same patches here. My query does not require any parameter. If your query needs a parameter, you can specify those parameters, input and output, both the type of parameter right here from this parameter section. And then further you can write your logic what you want to do with your database which uh, database record which you have retrieved that's it uh, now let's try and run this so get option let's see if it, uh, it works it's working fine So this is my HTTP GET option and this is the execute query option and this is what we are getting it as an option. So this always returns an array, so array of array record which means that it can, if it has more than one record now definitely can have uh, return the multiple record set. That's about the running the SQL server from the logic app with a passwordless option, right? Now if as we do always, we are going to verify the connections, whether it is using any kind of a connection string just for avoiding any kind of issues in future. So you can see that this is a connection parameter set as a manage identity, parameter values again, auth, auth provider is a manage identity, uh, database name, SQL name, as I mentioned, you can do a parameterization of these like we have done it for the case of uh, service plus, right? Now, in, in, in the case where you would like to delete or manage the users uh, from the database, so what you can do is you can similarly run the same query. Uh, as you can see that now we have got two users. One is the external, uh, external type of user, uh, the user which we have created for our logic app. If you would ever want to, let's say, destroy a user, uh, let me just rerun again. Just for the negative testing, we have to destroy the user. The user is destroyed successfully. If I run the select query again, you would have just one this user. Now, if I am going to run the workflow again, I should get an error saying that the, it's not able to connect to the SQL Server database. Let me rerun again. This is a negative testing we are doing. running right now and it has failed 
if you look at the error now it says unauthorized you can see that uh, this user is not authorized the user which is the manage identity user is not authorized to perform the action so this is how you can connect to the SQL Server in case if you would like to using the Manage Identity with the secretless options. You do not have to have any key vault secret or you do not have to secret providing in your app settings in plain text. So it's all managed by the Manage Identities. I hope you have found this useful and if it is, please give it a thumbs up to this particular demonstration and to the channel as well. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.